Hey girl gang, it's Dr. Joy here and you're watching Delivering Joy MD TV. So welcome to Well Woman Wednesdays. We are still talking about period problems and today's period problem is called endometriosis. That's right, endometriosis. So endometriosis is a condition that can cause severe pelvic pain and many women suffer this in silence. So make sure you keep watching to learn the details. All right, girl gang. So when we're talking about endometriosis, we're talking about a condition in which those cells that should be on the endometrial lining or that lining that's on the inside of our uterus where our period actually comes from, these cells are actually places that they shouldn't be. So basically this means that these cells have somehow found their way outside of their home and they have taken up residence in other places. The crazy thing about this is that just like the cells on the inside of the uterus, these cells will bleed when it's time for us to have our cycle. So how do those cells get there? How did this happen? We have two theories about this. The first is what's called retrograde menstruation. So remember the endometrial lining sheds off and those cells come out through the vagina onto a tampon pad, period panties, whatever you're using. With endometriosis, we think there may actually be some retrograde uh, bleeding. And this is especially uh, for women with really heavy prolonged periods. Sometimes there is a, um, a backflow of bleeding actually out through the fallopian tubes. And so those endometrial lining cells get all up in here where they shouldn't be. I once had a patient with endometriosis in her lungs. So there is another theory, and that is that the blood vessels that uh, line the uterus are actually allowing the endometriosis cells to escape and to migrate to other parts of the body where they should not be. But no matter where you are, you still are who you are. So when it's time for those endometrial lining cells to shed off and to bleed, they bleed wherever they have landed. So if they've landed on your uh, intestines, they bleed. If they've landed in your lungs, they bleed. If they've landed uh, on your ovaries or just somewhere randomly on the wall of your abdomen, they will bleed. And that bleeding is what leads to that horrible pain. Um, what are some of the risk factors? Women who started their periods really early. So if you were younger than 11, you may be at risk for developing endometriosis. If you have a family history of endometriosis, if you have periods that are coming more often than every 27 days. So if your period is coming every two or three weeks, you may be at risk. And certainly if you're having heavy or prolonged periods. Now there are also protective factors and some of the protective factors are breastfeeding for longer than six months. So extended breastfeeding. Uh, if you are exercising at least four hours per week, you're at decreased risk for endometriosis. If you um, are eating a healthy diet that's heavy on plant-based foods, that also decreases your risk. Endometriosis is an inflammatory process and eating a healthy diet and exercising decreases inflammation. So endometriosis can be really difficult sometimes to um, diagnose because it can present with a wide variety of different symptoms. And we have stages of endometriosis, but the stage does not really uh, necessarily match up with the symptoms. So you could have stage four, which is the most severe form of endometriosis and have no symptoms at all. Or you could have stage one, which is just uh, one or two spots of endometriosis and have horrible pain. So the symptoms don't necessarily match with the staging. So you may have cyclic pain, which is only at the periods. Women can have chronic pain, which is all throughout the month. We may see women who have painful sex uh, and that's usually on deep penetration with endometriosis. We see women who develop ovarian cysts and have you know, really bad pelvic pain. We also see women who may have pro uh, pain with their bladder emptying or filling. We see women who have pain with having a bowel movement. So there are just kind of a wide variety of symptoms and you could have no symptoms at all and have the worst endometriosis. How do we evaluate folks? 
Transvaginal ultrasound, again, is one of, one of our favorite modalities. So if you're GYN, you love a good transvaginal ultrasound. And transvaginal ultrasound helps us look for signs of endometriosis, but it's not very sensitive. The real gold standard diagnosing endometriosis is really what's called a diagnostic laparoscopy. And that's where we make a small incision and put in a camera and actually look inside your belly to look for those endometrial implants. And so the, those cells that should be in the endometrium that have landed somewhere else, we're looking for those. And they usually have a really like dark purple appearance. Sometimes they can look like powder burns. So there's a wide variety. And so it's really important that you're dealing with an gynecologist or a surgeon who's really who really knows where to look and what to look for when you're having this sort of diagnostic surgical procedure. Diagnostic laparoscopies are done in the operating room under anesthesia. So don't worry that you'll be going to your gynecologist's office and getting this done in the office. It's definitely done under anesthesia. Another option that I often offer for my younger women um, who maybe are still in their teens or early 20s because you know surgery is a big deal and sometimes even having a transvaginal ultrasound can be a big deal. Um, and so I also will do what's called an empiric trial of therapy. And empiric basically means we think we know what it is, but we haven't really fully diagnosed it. So we try a therapy and if the therapy works, then our theory was probably correct. So we may use like a birth control pill and see if the pain gets better. That is, is also an option for those women who really don't want invasive procedures. What do we do about it once we know that you have endometriosis? Well, definitely treatment is indicated. The first thing that, um, that we normally start with is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or NSAIDs. And we want to be clear about NSAIDs. I have a lot of women that I've seen that have been started on narcotic medications like Percocet, Vicodin, uh, even pain patches, you know, and narcotics have not really sh been shown to help improve endometriosis pain. So you want to go for NSAIDs, not narcotics. In addition, hormonal birth control. So your birth control pills, uh, Depo-Provera or uh, Depo-Lupron is another medication uh, that can be used. Danazol, um, you have the progesterone containing IUD like the Mirena or Liletta. You can also use some of the newer medications um, that have come out that are showing lots of promise. And so I think it's really important that you sit down and have a talk with your healthcare provider and kind of go through your options and choose a medication treatment. If you have failed medication therapy, if you've tried NSAIDs, if you've tried hormonal birth, birth control, um, that is a point at which you may need to move on to a treatment procedure. And, you know, we did say that the way that we really truly diagnose endometriosis is the diagnostic laparoscopy, where we put a camera in the belly and see it with our eyes. Well, during this procedure, there are options to go ahead and try to remove those endometrial implants. Now, remember, I said that these cells can land anywhere inside of your, your, your abdomen and torso, pelvis. Uh, we've even seen endometriosis in the brain. So they can go anywhere. Um, and so sometimes you can even have superficial endometriosis under your skin. Um, so removing it can sometimes be a booger. I'm just going to be honest. So if it lands on your bladder, well, you kind of need your bladder. If it lands on your rectum, you kind of need your intestines. So it's hard to just go in there and just start whacking endometriosis out. You have to be uh, very skilled and careful about dissecting the endometriosis away. Uh, so, you know, I often, um, you know, for these cases, these are, are usually cases that take a lot of time and a lot of skill and effort. So you want to make sure that the surgeon that you go um, for is someone who it does a good job with this and it can be really challenging. And so I'm always very honest with patients to say, hey, you know, I think you have a level of disease that I need to refer out because there are pelvic pain specialists. We actually hosted a live with um, the specialist that I refer to, Dr. Sweeney Hawkins. So 
Um, I'll link that down in the description box, our conversation. Uh, but I think that we should certainly uh, be doing uh, some diagnostic investigation and possibly treatment by removing the endometrial implants. Some endometriosis can implant on the ovaries and that causes an ovarian cyst. And those, those ovarian cysts are called endometriomas. We certainly want to remove those um, as much as possible, especially in a woman who is trying to conceive because that has really been shown to help decrease infertility in women who have endometriosis. Hysterectomy plus or minus removal of the ovaries is also uh, a, a surgical treatment option. And I counsel women that hysterectomy should, should be when you are done with childbearing or you've reached a point where you're just kind of over it and it's and it's time to um, act definitively, hysterectomy plus removal of ovaries is considered the gold standard definitive end all be all treatment for endometriosis. Although I can tell you, I've had a few patients who still had pelvic pain and we had to go back and actually do nerve surgery to, uh, to cut the nerves going into the pelvis and the vagina. And so there are some women who just have such severe disease that they're going to need um, some sort of pain relief by whatever means necessary. Um, certainly, hysterectomy with removal of the ovaries is not the place that you start, but it is uh, considered the definitive therapy. I really urge women to consider all their options though, uh, because hysterectomy is, is definite and you're not going to be able to get your uterus back. So if there is a way to save your uterus and still have quality of life, then I you know, highly recommend exploring those options, doing the work of changing your diet, exercising, um, and, and taking medications regularly if necessary um, is really certainly um, the way that I would start. And then laparoscopy uh, for removal of disease or even diagnosis of disease would be the next step if medications, diet, exercise, uh, and lifestyle factors have um, failed us. Next, I want to talk about something that I think is really overlooked, and that is mental health. Women who have chronic pelvic pain often have a lot of mental and emotional distress. Your life is like thrown completely out of balance. It kind of becomes all about the pain and not about the things that you love or, you, or enjoy. It's more about your periods than it is your passion. And that is really emotionally and mentally draining. I absolutely encourage my patients who um, have endometriosis to seek mental health support, so counseling and emotional and social support. Um, there are lots of, um, of groups out there that are on social media that are dedicated to women with chronic pelvic pain and endometriosis, groups that are specifically for women suffering from infertility due to endometriosis. Uh, so there's lots of support out there. You just have to seek it out. And then really talking to your family, the people who are in your circles, who are affected by the fact that maybe two or three days out of the month, you literally cannot get up and go. You need to really be open and honest and seek out that social, mental, emotional, and even physical support. Sometimes you need somebody to just go, you know, get you something to eat. You just can't get up. Endometriosis is really a quality of life drainer, I find, for many of my patients. And so that draining is not just physical, but it, it is also mental and emotional. And we should recognize and appreciate that and be compassionate enough with ourselves as women to, to go ahead and seek the the support that we need. I hope that today's video was helpful. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up, comment or question down below, and make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss a single Delivering Joy MDTV episode. I'll see you next time, girl gang. Peace.